In this video, we'll take a look at some of the other panels, palettes, and screens that are available here in After Effects, and other than the ones we've been looking at so far. As I mentioned, over here we have our project window, and in that project window we have all the files cached that we have imported that we're going to be working with here. Also note that you can, by clicking on this, make a folder or a bin. You can give that any name you want. Let's just call that, oh, we'll call that audio. And assuming that we had multiple audio files that we wanted to work with, we could organize those into subfolders here. And you just click and drag. And then once it's in there, you can roll that down to see what that looks like. And to change the name of this, let's say I want to change that to music, I can't just click on it. I have to click on it and hit the return. And that will let us change the name, hit return again, and that sets the name. So we can organize the project window with bins or subfolders. Here is the composition window, make a new composition window, which we'll look at in just a sec. And here is the trash, and we can just drag items to that trash or just select them here and delete them, and they'll be removed from the project. They won't be removed from your hard drive, of course, just from the project itself. Now, let's look at kind of the basic subunit in After Effects, which is the composition. So we have basically one project at a time, but that project can have any number of compositions or what are just abbreviated as comps. And the composition is where you actually make the visuals, where you make the artwork. And when you create a composition, you need to specify certain things about that composition based on your output format, finally, when you're going to be doing that. So let's click on the Make a New Composition here. And what we're going to see now is what's called the Composition Settings window. So in here, we have a bunch of presets that are preset for different types of video formats, video and film formats. You can see because I had worked with a file before that it's kind of preset here for the DV setting. So if I look at, set this to DV, a version of DV, it'll set it to the correct frame rate, which is 29.97 as opposed to 30. It'll set it to the correct pixel aspect ratio, which we'll talk about later, resolution, duration, and so forth. Now, another way to do this, rather than making it there, Especially if I already have a piece of footage that I know I want to work with in that composition, a sort of a quick shortcut to doing that is to take that footage, and we have a DV file here, take that and drag that onto the new composition button here. And that's going to make a new composition that contains that footage, as you can see here, and places that footage in the timeline down here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is reduce the size of this composition window which is kind of our viewer window, to 50% so that I can move things around here a little more easily. So now we're seeing that piece of footage that I had dropped into and created that composition with. And you can see it's some dogwood branches against the blue sky, kind of waving in the breeze. We'll be using that for a specific purpose a little bit later on. Now, the composition window itself has a whole bunch of buttons, as you can see. It has that magnification button, as you saw before. I can also, if I have a mouse with a scroll wheel, I can just put the scroll wheel directly in there and scroll. What I'm doing is scrolling the scroll wheel on my mouse here, and that will zoom it as well. And we have a bunch of other controls here along the bottom. So this sets the resolution of the composition. And this is not the same as the size of the composition. And in fact, the size of the composition has not been changing. What we've been doing here is changing this magnification ratio, the amount that we're zoomed in and out of the screen in viewing in the composition window. But the composition itself, which is 720 by 480 pixels, has not changed. So what we're doing here is just kind of zooming in and out of it. What we're doing here is setting the number of pixels that are being viewed and processed at any one time. So at 50%, we're actually only viewing half of those pixels that have already been reduced from the full size. So basically we're looking at a quarter of the pixels. And the reason for doing that, especially on older, slower machines, is that by setting After Effects to really only process every other pixel, you are saving a lot of processing time. And this is useful for when you are 
trying things out and testing out ideas and that sort of stuff. You don't necessarily have to view everything at the fullest possible resolution. And by setting it to a half resolution or even lower, you can save a lot of rendering time. Because an important thing to understand about After Effects is that there's very little in here that actually happens in real time. Unlike, say, in an editing program where you have a piece of footage, you drop that in your timeline, you hit the space bar, you hit the play button, and it starts to play immediately. That doesn't happen in After Effects. And the reason being that After Effects internally converts everything to a full resolution, uncompressed video file or image file or what, whatever that may be. There's no native version of a codec the way that there is in an editing program like Final Cut or Premiere. You can work with any type of footage that's supported by QuickTime or that's supported by Video for Windows on the Windows side. And... By allowing us to work with any of those types of programs, the way it does that essentially is by converting them all to this kind of standard internal uncompressed format. And what that means is that you can't really play stuff in real time. You can kind of drag through here pretty quickly. And if I hit the space bar, there is a space bar that I can hit play on. And it'll kind of go through there. It'll tell you up here if it's actually playing in real time or not, which it isn't really. So it's it's kind of playing close to that, but really not quite accurately. In fact, it's a little bit slow. And so what it's telling us there is, in fact, the playback is happening off the drive. It's doing okay, but it's not doing great. So it's not really playing in real time, even though it's actually a relatively small file. And again, this is because of this whole compression business, or rather the fact that everything is uncompressed. We're dealing with uncompressed footage. So that's an important thing to understand. So we have seen here that we have sort of our basic composition window. In our next video, we will move on and take a look at more stuff in the composition window and what good this all does us.